What's up guys, Brian here and I'm back again with another awesome video. For today's video, we are going to talk about dodge and burn technique for adding depth and dimension to your subject skin when retouching in Photoshop. Dodging and burning is a technique that has been around in photography for over a century. It is a technique that was used by masters of photography like Fan Ho and Hansel Adam centuries ago before Photoshop even came around. They used it in the darkroom to add depth and dimension to their picture and also to draw your focus to a certain part of a picture. For today's video, we are not going to talk about how to dodge and burn the entire picture but just how to dodge and burn your subject skin when you are retouching. That way you can add depth and dimension to it. So without further ado, let's begin. Welcome back guys. So this is Photoshop. This is a lovely image that was shot by an amazing photographer by the name of Eleanor Goody. And I'll drop a link to her instagram down there in the description box so you can go check her out and give her a follow she recently gave out this image for retouching so that people that are staying at home due to the pandemic can occupy themselves so this is the image we'll be using for this video now this image i've already retouched it let me show you guys i always use frequency separation for my retouching and basically what i do with the frequency separation is just to even out the transition between the tones in the skin that's the highlight and the mid tones and stuff and most of the time after you are done with your frequency separation or your retouching the image will tend to look less contrasty and more flat so with the dodge and burn technique you'll be able to add back some depth and dimension to your image there are so many ways of doing dodge and burn in Photoshop but the technique I'm going to show you guys today is really simple and easy and it's by using curves. It is the technique that I personally use and I've been using it for some time and I really really love it. To set up your dodge and burn layers, you just have to come over here under your layers like at the bottom of your layers tab, you see this icon, just click on it, you see your curves adjustment layer here, click on it and it will create the curves adjustment layer. Now change the blend mode from normal to multiply if you want to create the burn and then to screen if you want to create the dodge. So we are going to create two of them. For this, for the first one we are just going to set the blend mode to screen and then I'm going to rename the layer to dodge and then I'm going to invert the layer mask here i'm going to explain how a layer mask works in a minute then we are going to create another we can just duplicate this one or create another one let me create another one now curves layer then we'll name this one burn and then we'll change the blend mode to multiply and then we'll invert it again but before i invert it let me explain to you why i really love using curves for my dodging and burning why I love using curves for my, like this particular technique for my dodging and burning is that it has a limit. For example, when you create this layer like this, this is the, when you max out your dodge and burn, it will not pass this stage. Like your darkest part will not pass here and your lightest part of the image will not also pass the limit here. But when you are using a tool like the default dodge and burn tool which has no limit, you keep brushing and brushing and brushing and if you are not careful, you might just end up ruining the image. So this one is like a controlled dodge and burn. It has a limit that, that once you reach there, the darkening will not pass there and that is really good. Let me now invert the layer mask. So to invert a layer mask, just click on the layer mask itself. Then click and hold the control or command key on your keyboard and click on I to invert. So now we still have our picture the way it was before. Let me turn on all the new layers we created. As you can see, no effect. That's because I invented layer mask is on. So let me explain how a layer mask works. I'm going to use a hard brush here. Let me change the color to red. Let me make it a very hard brush. Hard and reduce the size to something like this. So a layer mask is like a piece of glass. Let's say a piece of glass that is transparent. 
glasses are generally transparent right so when it is white it means it is transparent any light that comes anything that is on top of it can be visible from the bottom but when it is black it means that it is opaque which means that nothing can be visible through it so when it was white here let me invert it again the effect of the layer is visible but now that we have inverted it it is now opaque which means that nothing can be seen like any changes we make on this layer won't affect the image below it so that's how a layer mask works i hope you understand it so when you make your layer mask opaque like this and nothing visible if you want the effects to show gradually you just brush it in slowly just like wiping off the the black material that you put on top of the glass to prevent the light from passing through it so let's say we use a flow of 5 or let's say 16 when we brush here when we brush white like when we wipe off this black part you see that effect is now visible and if we click on the layer mask icon here you see that is the part that we wiped off so that's how a layer mask works just in case you didn't know so i'll just undo that and delete this layer on top okay now that i've explained that the next thing we are going to do is to put this in a group so I'll click select the two layers and click on command g or ctrl g any depending on if you're on mac or windows and then i'll rename it to d and b that way it's in a group you see that's a group with the dodge and bone now you can duplicate this group i always used to i have an action for it i actually set up an action for my dodge and bone you can just use one group so mine is two one is for general dodge and burn and the next one is for details so let me just duplicate this and call it details that's if there are small things that i need to fix then i can use that one but we are going to work with one at the moment so now that we've set up our dodge and burn layer the next thing we are going to do is to actually dodge and burn the image in dodging and burning a basic understanding of the human anatomy is very very useful so if you understand how the bones are structured and how light falls or acts on the human body then it will really help you in your dodging and burning like in this picture now the forehead is the closest part to the light the forehead here is closer than this other part so the light will actually reflect on this part and make that place highlighted that's why you are seeing this highlight here same with the nose here the reach of the nose as you can see this part here is highlighted this other part here is highlighted because that's like the part that is closest to the light it's closer than this other part same with this part here same with the lips same with this part and this part i can go on and on and on even with the body so the highest point or should i say the the most protruding part is where you dodge and then the part that is under it is where you burn so all these parts that i've showed you guys are where you will dodge now let me also make another layer here and change the color to black okay now if you dodge this part this other part is a little bit in the shade or shadow part so this is where you burn this other part here is where you burn remember the light is touching here and is gradually fading as the image like as the person's face is going down so this other part here is in shade so this is the part that you burn this other part here is a little bit in shade this is the part you burn you burn here you burn here it's the same thing that makeup artists use when they are doing makeup they highlight they understand this concept very well so they highlight the they highlight where light touches and then contour where where they shade to create the structure of the human face so when you're also burning where is our burn layer i think this is it you burn here you burn here and so on and so forth 
so that's the pattern to use when you are dodging and burning so now that i've explained what dodge and burn is and how to do it and which part to dodge and burn let's actually go straight to dodging and burning if you are new to this when you are starting out with your dodge and burn please i'm begging you use a very low setting or else you mess things up really quick so when you are when you want to dodge and burn you click on the layer mask of the layer that you want to whether it's dodge or burn so for the dodge we are going to use a white brush remember white is to reveal and black is to conceal so make sure that our foreground color is white then we we'll click on ok then what we are going to work with is a flow not actually the opacity so your flow is the number of times your brush stroke will take to get to 100 so like this layer here 100 let me show you 100 is this so if we change the brush this thing to 25 percent it means it will take us four strokes to get to 100 so that's one two three and four and as you can see this is 100 this is the maximum this can go if you keep brushing over and over again it will not pass it because that's 100 that's the maximum that the dodge layer can go because remember without the mask this is what it looks like so when you are when you are dodging and burning for the first time or when even when you have been dodging and burning for a while always use low settings so we are going to take our flow to one percent and then we are going to bring down the softness of our brush of our brush to zero like the hardness of our brush to zero percent because we want a really soft brush that way any area or any issue or any mistake we make will be very visible why we use the low flow is so that any mistake we make will be more forgiving if we use a let, let me show you something let's say we use a hardness of like 64 and a flow of 27 let's just dodge this part see how horrible it looks that doesn't look natural that doesn't look like the way the light was before but if we undo that and change the flow to one percent and the hardness to zero percent let's say we brush here and brush and brush and brush if you notice any mistake we make is barely visible because it's building up slowly so if i turn over and on this layer you'll now be able to see the difference shake and see yeah so that's why you need to use a low setting when you are dodging and burning so now that that is said let me now actually dodge and burn flow one percent then my hardness to zero percent then under the burn layer we'll make some round moves with our brush as you can see slowly slowly moving up so what i normally like doing is i'll first start with a small brush for a point like the forehead that is round I'll start with a small brush then as i'm brushing i'm increasing it till it becomes very big that way it will look more natural because that's how the light will naturally fade out on the face so another thing i do to help me with my dodge and burn is to create a black and white layer that will make the bright and the dark part of the image more visible so i'll just come to this same place click on black and white then i'll reduce the rates i'll just use this button to bring down the rate same thing with the yellows here and as you can see the brighter part of the image is more visible now same with the darker part that way it will be easier to dodge and burn the image so if i if i turn off my frequency separation you see that it will be even easier to see where to dodge and burn so with our dodge and burn helper let me rename it So with our dodge and burn helper on now let's go ahead and dodge so i already started dodging the forehead as you can see here i'll dodge the reach of the nose dodge this point here then dodge here remember all those parts that i told you about i'll dodge them then here what do they call this part of the nose i've always wondered i don't really know what that's that place is called i'll dodge here and remember these other points anyway you see highlight you dodge this can also be used to fix bad lighting 
so let's say you did some horrible lighting you can also use dodge and burn to fix it so after i've finished dodging that point the next thing i'm going to do is to burn remember we are supposed to burn this other side because this side is in shade like this side is not as bright as the other point so we just go around dodging dodging sorry burning i'm now confusing myself we are currently burning i normally like burning around the face so that it will give the face more shape then we are going to burn this other side of the nose remember this point here we are going to burn same with this point we are going to burn here now depending on how much care and how long you're using your burning and your dodging the result will vary so someone that has been doing it for a long time will have a better result and would spend less time but when you are starting out take your time to do the dodging and burning so let me now turn on my frequency separation layer if i turn on my dodge and burn helper let me toggle the dodge and burn layer on and off so that i can see the difference so far see before after before after you can already see the depth and dimension just look at it one, one more time this is before after you can see the dimension that it's creating let me just dodge and burn a little more must warn you to always be very careful when you are dodging and burning as this can actually ruin the structure of a face if you don't do it well so let's say i decide to burn this part of the or let me say let me dodge this part of the nose now look at the difference between now here and here you can see our nose doesn't look the way it was naturally so if you dodge and burn the wrong way you can actually ruin the person's face so actually be very careful when you are dodging and burning so i'll just go ahead and dodge the remaining part of the image let me toggle it on and off so that you can see see the depth that we have created that okay i've gotten rid of it you can see what that brush stroke did to the face just look at the nose see how bad it is just a wrong brush stroke that we made so i'll just go ahead and dodge the remaining part of the body real quick that we are done with the normal dodge and burn let me show you the effect this is before this is after you can see the depth that that dodge and burn has actually added to the image and I, it's not like i really like took my time to do the dodge and burn it's just a really quick dodge and burn so let me show you some other things you can do with dodge and burn it's a very powerful technique you can use it to make someone look slimmer you can use it to make someone look fatter they are like the things you can do with dodging and burning it's it's a lot like it's very many so it's just up to you you can use it to darken this hairline for example let me say i want to make the hairline darker it's just to brush here if i want to make it brighter I can use it if it, there is some skin issues that you want to fix you can still use dodge and burn so another thing that i like using dodge and burn for i'll use the dodge and burn details group here now you can choose to dodge and burn with a lot of different groups that way let's say you want to dodge and burn the eyes you create a separate group with the dodge and burn layer that way if you ruin the dodge and burn for the eyes you can just delete that layer and do it again but if you use one layer to do everything 
if you mess up the eye you have to start afresh and do the entire thing again and that could take you hours so to save yourself some time and stress just create separate groups for different things so my own for the details layer i like using it to dodge and burn the eyes so for that i'll increase my flow to around six and if i make a few strokes around the iris you notice that it will be much brighter you can see how nice the catch light is now let me show you before after see how lovely that is so i'll just dodge the catch light here to make it brighter then i'll burn the pupil if that's the correct name then another thing that i also like burning is the eyelashes just to make it darker take your time when you are dodging and burning then eyelashes same thing just a little you can use it to fill in the eyelashes sorry eyebrow not eyelashes that's the eyebrow so let me show you the effect that the dodge and burn in there as you see the attention that it draws to the eyes because it's now a very contrasty part of the face so another thing I'm going to do is to dodge the lips as you can see here to bring more attention to the lips let me show you before after you can dodge the jewelry there's a whole lot of things you can do with dodge and burn so let me show you the before and after this is before let me just group all of them together let me delete this let me join the two groups together and call it dodge and burn d and b now if i toggle it off and on you can see the depth and dimension that it has added to the image now if at the end of the day you discover that you went too far with the dodge and burn you can always reduce the opacity of the layer or the group so that the effect won't be that much again so if 100 percent is too much you can take it down to 70 percent and as you can see it's much better than it was at 100 percent so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys learned a lot of things if you did give this video a thumbs up if you have any question drop it down in the comment section if you are new to this channel click on the subscribe button ring the bell icon just next to it so that you don't miss other awesome videos in future see you guys in the next one